But now I want to turn to what is viable. And what I'd like to outline for you are, really it's a, it's a portfolio or a menu of options of things that we can do. And one of them is desalination. I mean, we do have the technology to take salt out of water. It's not a silver bullet, though. And the reason for that is it's, first, very expensive. The membranes that you use in reverse osmosis are very high-tech, costly, they're prone to fouling, they require frequent replacement. So it's costly. The second thing is it's very energy-intensive, pushing that water at high pressure through the membranes. So it reinforces the energy-water connection. And the more energy you, knew, you use, we now know, the more water you use to produce the energy, and you're in this, you're in this, this cycle. And the third challenge for desal is, what do you do with the salt that's left over? It doesn't go away. It's all concentrated into a brine stream. And that's proving very challenging in California. There's a plant there, the Poseidon plant. They would like to just use an outflow pipe uh, to, uh, to get rid of it. Tampa Bay had this problem, the same company. Poseidon built the Tampa Bay one years ago. Uh, the environmental community in Florida on the West Coast is very concerned about this really salty water mixing with tidal water and affecting nursery conditions. So it's, it's a challenge. Still, it's on the table. And if you have a high value use and few other options, desal will be part of the portfolio um, going forward. Uh, much more viable is reuse. Now, this has uh, taken a, you know, a bit of a, had a bit of a bad rap with the press. They've dubbed it the, the toilet to tap proposal. And, um, and there's Fido. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not here to advocate that you elbow Fido out of the way. Okay? That's, that's not my message this morning. I am here to say that reclaimed water, water that's been sent back to the water treatment facility and cleaned up, is a perfectly fine source of water for lots of uses. Uh, in Tucson, about 10% of the water that Tucson Water provides is reclaimed water. Uh, it's used for watering golf courses, highways, parks, uh, other vegetation area. You may have noticed a sign right out in the driveway that this is reclaimed water for some of the plantings around the facility here. Uh, 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 Google's starting to use reclaimed water in some of its server farms. So there's a lot of things we can do with reclaimed water. And the best part of it is you already have the water. It's water right there. And what you need to do is to figure out how you're going to move it around. Uh, in California, uh, the city of Los Angeles has uh, a plant called the Hyperion Treatment Plant. It produces a volume of water equal to the seventh largest river in the entire country. Virtually every drop of that water they dump into the Pacific Ocean. If California reuse that water, it would help immensely in solving LA's problems. So it's part of the solution. So desal is one, reuse is another. It's not a silver bullet either though, it's costly. You've got to have a completely separate system of pipes to keep it from being in contact with the potable system. Uh, it's easier to do in a new area than trying to go into say the city of Philadelphia and ripping up streets to lay pipes. So it's not, it's not easy. But uh, going forward, it's an important um, source of, of water. And a, a third, third option, and I think really the low-hanging fruit option, is conservation. So here you have a, a, a photo of Southern California that really, for me, it, it, the photo expresses a thousand words. Boy, this, this photo does it. You just see that on the left, this constructed environment I mean, completely, utterly, totally artificial, with every house with a lawn and most of them with swimming pools, just a, 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 as arid a land in the United States as you could find. Probably three inches of rain a year there, and yet everyone has a lawn. Um, that's true all around Southern California. San Diego and LA are deserts. Um, they get about 12 inches of rain a year. Uh, we in Tucson, in the middle of the Sonoran Desert, get 11 inches of rain. But if you've been to Tucson, you know you don't see lawns around Tucson. It's just not in our DNA. It's not in the culture. We don't do lawns. Um, but that's not something they have gotten used to in Southern California. But conservation and reuse would solve California's, Southern California problem. So we, we don't need to despair, 
but we need to be more thoughtful about how we use water. Uh, another kind of conservation that's really taken hold is water harvesting. This is a photograph of a, of a silo on uh, an island uh, off of Seattle. Um, and this couple has uh, a well, and the well is, of course, in the middle of the ocean. It's on an island in the Pacific. And so they decided to use the water that hits their rooftop during the rainy season, and they store it in the silo. They have a, tr a treatment system for it, and they are off the water grid. They just totally year-round supply simply from the water that hits their roof that's stored, treated, and used, used on site. So it's, it's, it's pretty exciting. And there's actually quite a bit of good news about water conservation. If you were to look at the statistics nationwide, we're using less water now than we did 15 years ago. And, and a good reason for that, some people don't like to hear this, is government rules and regulations have done it. Uh, the Clean Water Act has forced utilities and power, power plants and companies like Intel and Motorola to clean up their water. They're using a heck of a lot water, a heck of a lot less. And EPA rules on low flow fixtures have changed out our toilets and changed out our, our, our shower heads and our washing machines. All of those use a heck of a lot of water and, and we're using less water. So there's a, there is um, a good story behind, uh, behind the conservation uh, message. Well, I, in, in the, the time I have left, I'd like to talk with you about three things that we're not doing in the United States that I think we should be doing to solve the water crisis. So first, I want to take dead aim at the flush toilet. So a century ago, <clears throat> President Teddy Roosevelt said the civilized people should do something with sewage other than put it in the drinking water. Well, of course, of course. Uh, uh, oh, no, wait a minute. Uh, no, that's what we do. We urinate and defecate in drinking water and then we send it back to the treatment plant to treat it and to send it back again so we can shit in it again. Now, if that's not the definition of insanity, I don't know what is. Now, the, the flush toilet's a very interesting um, aspect of, of, of modern life, and I think you may have heard some about how flush toilets in the 19th century developed as this enormous progress in, in public health. When you had cesspools and open latrines, you had all of the cholera and typhoid and all of these other wa waterborne illnesses develop. And that initially, flush toilets were a great way to solve this public health concept. But I want, I want to give you one factoid. Before the rise of flush toilets in the United States, people used three to five gallons of water per person. Today, it's 100, 200 gallons of water per person. It's largely the convenience of having piped in water that has multiplied so the water use. And now when you think about 2015 and flush toilets, what you realize is this is a system that wastes water, wastes money, wastes energy. We treat to drinking quality water, water that we don't use to drink or cook. Uh, fully a third of the water delivered to our homes we use outside. That would be perfectly fine untreated. Of the indoor use, fully a third of that we flush away. That's six billion gallons of water a day. Two trillion gallons of water a year just to get rid of human waste. So waste water, waste money, waste energy. And there's another component. The water that we get back has some problems because traditional wastewater treatment plants do not remove what the EPA calls emerging contaminants. These are endocrine disrupting compounds. And I expect you've probably heard a little bit about that in the last few days. Basically, they're antibiotics. They're, antibiotics, they're, 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 they're uh, uh, hormone supplements. They're anything we get from a brown bottle from the pharmacy. Any script, many of those compounds have very powerful chemicals and those chemicals are not removed from the treatment plant. And researchers at the University of Arizona have studied water downstream from these plants, <clears throat> and they have found intersex frogs, deformed fish, pretty scary stuff, basic genetics, you know, who's a boy and who's a girl. Uh, and it turns out that what's in the water really depends on the community. Uh, I tell a funny story in the book about an upscale Connecticut community that sampled its water 
and they found that cocaine and ecstasy use spiked on the weekend. Well, you know, I don't care what you do when you're off time. I don't want to be drinking the fun that you had over the weekend. You know, that's not my idea of, of good, of good public, public health. So the time is right. Our infrastructure in the United States needs a tremendous amount of overhaul. The, there are main water leaks to the tune of 250,000 breaks a year in the United States. We need to replace the pipes and the plumbing. Let's figure out something else to do with human waste other than put it in the drinking water. So let's have a national, thank you. We can do this, we can do this. Let's have a national commission to figure out what to do. I mean, already there are waterless urinals. They're all around the, the campus where I teach at the University of Arizona. You see them increasingly in ball fields. Those things work fine. Uh, there are composting and incinerating toilets. Uh, wh whether they're ready for prime time, probably not. But, but let's put the energy and creativity of our engineers and scientists and, uh, 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 and inventors to work to make sure that we can figure out something else to do with, with human waste. Now this, for some people, is a hard sell. And I understand that. Um, I would not personally have put the flush toilet at the top of my list, but you know, that's why free speech exists, so people can, can do that.